Leaving a position where one has been happy is always sad, madam. However, the splendid references which you've seen fit to sign are at least some consolation. I would like to stay, but I've always held the opinion that a man in my position should strive constantly to be extended. And I think we would both agree that my work here is finished. All that remains is to tidy up. a foreign land, Laura. You need the protection of the American Embassy. You forget I was born here. Ah, yes, but you've lived most of your life abroad. You married an American. You, you have no friends here in England, no acquaintances. You're a stranger here. Since when did strangers in England need diplomatic shelter? Charming though my guardian would be. Oh, not all strangers. Just a, a beautiful, newly bereaved millionaires. I know George would have wanted me to look after you. After all, he, he always admitted he was lucky to have seen you six months before I did. Hugo, dear. There is no one I'd rather be looked after by, if you'll forgive the undiplomatic grammar. But it's really too soon. I came here to get away. Away from Washington, away from people who knew me, from memories. Anything that might remind me. Well, you're going to be lonely. Oh, Hugo. Please don't think I'm not delighted to see you. I am. And I know that later I'll be glad you're here, but just now I want to be among strangers, anonymous. I want to become <sighs> empty for a while. Does that make sense? Very well. But you do well to remember what they call me in the service. The bulldog. Mm. You never let go. <laughs> it's rather comforting in a way. Excuse me, madam. There's a person in the hall. Mr. Masters says he has an appointment with you. An interview for Butler? Uh, yes, yeah, sure, I'm in, Betty. Yeah, well, I'll be on my way. By the fa way, if this uh, fellow doesn't work out, I'd be a pretty mean hand at butling myself. <laughs> Mr. Masters, madam. Goodbye, Laura. Think about it. I will. Mm. Mr. Roger Masters, madam, at your service. It was noon you suggested, I think. If you'd care to sit down, Mr. Well, Masters. Thank you, madam. I'm very well as I am. Well, I've uh, looked through the references you sent me. They're most impressive. Tell me, why did you leave your last employer? She went abroad for her health, madam. However, she was kind enough to write down her impressions of me before she left. Mm, so I see. Look after Mrs. Valens, Betty. She's quite on her own, you know. Oh, I will, sir. Don't you worry about a thing. Your last post was in the country, I see. Will you like it in town? Oh, I'm sure I will, madam. I'm quite accustomed to London. Well, I don't intend to maintain a large establishment. If you came, there'd be yourself and the maid, Betty. She also does the cooking and cleaning. The advertisement mentioned just yourself in the household, madam. That is so. Would it be your intention, madam, to have frequent house guests? That would be very far from my intention. A staff of two would be perfectly adequate, madam. I want quiet, masters. Peace and quiet. Should we agree? I'll expect you to remember that. I think I can promise to provide that, madam. Is the salary satisfactory? Perfectly, thank you. Very well, the engagement is yours. You may bring your things this evening and start tomorrow, if you wish. I do wish it, thank you. I assure you, you won't live to regret it. I was appointed to the post of butler, yes. I saw your references the other day. You move about quite a bit, don't you? Mrs. Valence found them perfectly satisfactory. I never said she didn't, did I?
It went like a dream. We're in. No problems? There's a maid who'll need watching. Thank you, Betty. He's the new butler, is he then, madam? Yes, I'm sure you'll get on very well with him. He, uh, drives a bit of a flash car for a butler, madam. Well, we all have our little weaknesses, even butlers. Yes, madam. The cigar? No, thanks, Dan. I, uh, I ran into Laura Valance today. Laura Valance? Yes. Remember Mrs. Valance? Laura Valance. Yes, I, I mentioned her the other day. Oh, yeah. Uh, Washington, wasn't she? M married to that guy in the State Department. Uh, that's right. You got it. Just uh, bumped into her, did you? Yes. Yes. Her husband died, you know, and she's over here on a kind of a sabbatical to get over it. And that's how you bumped into her? Yes. Yes. She's taking a house near the park. Sensible lady. And where did this collision take place? What? The... Oh, they... they, they... <laughs> yes, I see what you... Uh, well, no, she's... Uh, we met over at her house. It's rather too big for her, I would have thought. Still, well, you know, she wants seclusion. Well, pretty shaken up, I suppose. Yes, yes. Well, I remember what it was like when your mother died. It takes a bit of getting used to. I should think the best thing for her would be to get married again. Well, she was very happy with... What's his name, wasn't she? Well, that's the point. It's the people that were happy the first time round who have the best chance of making a go of it again. So when's the wedding? What? When are you going to marry Laura Valance? Well, that's what you were getting around to in about two hours' time, isn't it? Why, you I she... mentioned her the other day. Do you realize exactly how many times you've mentioned her recently? Oh, dear. The house is too big for her, if you ask me. Too big and too quiet. No friends, no relatives. What she wants to do is marry that nice Mr. Hugo and have a life again. This is Madam's study, where she does all the accounts and correspondence and such like. She should have a man to do all that for her. Oh, she has now, Betty. Me. I mean a husband, not a butler. What's in here? Madam's personal papers. Bank things, checkbooks, documents, things like that. They're none of your concern. You evidently have not been in service very long. The whole house and all its problems are the concern of the butler. Is that what it was like at Chevening Manor? What do you know of Chevening Manor? Don't know nothing about it. Just saw it on your references, that's all. And prying into other people's affairs is one of the little habits you're going to have to get out of now I'm in charge. Thank you, Masters. The temperature is perfect. I think we shall get on very well. I shall use my very best endeavours to that end, madam. You may go. Thank you, madam. Good night, madam. Good night, Masters. Oh, you 
did give me a turn. What are you doing? No, on the contrary, what are you doing? I've just been upstairs to see if she wanted anything. Well, that's my responsibility now. Kindly remember your station. My station? Where do you think you are? Bleak House? Queen Victoria's dead, you know. Anyway, what are you doing in there? I was checking the doors and windows. The security of the house is my concern. The security of the house. Creeping about like Frankenstein. It's enough to give a girl curly hair. Come in, Betty. Betty, this is most distressing, and I hope you don't... Oh, forgive me, madam. I know how embarrassing these matters can be. The fact is that a valuable ring is missing from Mrs. Valence's jewel case. What? It was there when Mrs. Valence went to sleep last night. It is not there now, since there are only the two of us in the and house. Masters, I... Oh, excuse me, madam. That will be the police. The police? I didn't tell you to send for the police. I'm sorry, madam, but I am at a disadvantage in this matter. I am the newcomer. And I therefore felt it essential in my own interests that the matter be investigated in the proper manner. It really if you'll forgive not me, madam. To... Madam, I swear. I... It's absolutely horrible. There are police all over the house. The maid is miserable. I should never have let it get this far. Well, it's a rotten thing to have happened, but after all, you had Betty, what, two weeks? Mm. Masters arrived just yesterday. It's best to get it straightened out. Oh, Hugo, I'm so glad you're here. I don't think I could have coped by myself. Well, I thought I'd just drop by on my way to the madhouse, see if you care to have lunch with me. Ah, oh, I think we've got it sorted out, Mrs. Valence. Is, uh, is that the ring? Yes. Yes, that's the one. Where did you find it? I dropped it somewhere and not realised. No, madam, he hadn't dropped it, not in that sense. We found it in your maid's bedroom, rolled up in a pair of tights. Oh, but she couldn't. Well, she wouldn't. In any case, she's far too sensible. She must have known I'd miss it. You'd be surprised, madam, how careless lots of ladies are with their jewellery. They don't know whether it's on their hand or their... Well, these girls know that. They trade on it. Do you wish us to prefer charges, Mrs. Valence? Uh, no, 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 no. Good heavens, no, um... Oh, Hugo, please, will you deal with it? I just couldn't face her. Tell Masters to give her the customary amount in lieu of notice and oh, deal with it in any way you like. Tell her... I'm sorry.
Please don't distress yourself, madam. You did the only thing you could. You seem such a straightforward person. And she probably has a record of such thefts. The girl was lucky not to find herself prosecuted. Now, that makes me a bit nervous about finding a replacement. Uh, might I suggest, madam, that you leave it to me? I'm confident of finding a suitable person. Yes. Yes, of course, masters. Why don't you do that? I'll leave it in your hands. Very good, madam. Will madam be at home for lunch? Uh, no, no, I shall be lunching out with Mr. Fane. I've also asked him to dine here the day after tomorrow, so if you could arrange something before then. Of course, madam. Will that be all, madam? Yes, thank you, masters. You're a genius. Hmm? These are the best Earth Uncut Cut I've had since Brussels. Where'd you find it? I didn't. Masters did it. You know, he really is turning out to be quite a prize. No chance for me to do my stuff then, huh? <laughs> you go. Beautiful. My compliments to the chef. But one vital ingredient missing. At the moment, the cream spinach. I got that out of her when we discussed the menu. She adores spinach, but he never touches it. Wise man. Trolley. Where did you dig up this goddess of the kitchen? We've worked together before, sir. I remembered her, and she happened to be free. I can't think why. If it weren't you, my dear, I'd steal her away myself tomorrow. <laughs> A little more spinach, madam. Yes, yes, I believe I will. I feel very well, Masters. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that, madam. Yeah, I shan't be down to breakfast. I know how wretched these little upsets can make one feel. Might I suggest, madam, that you return to bed? And I'll instruct Lisa to prepare something simple. I'll bring up the mail and the household checks for you to sign later. I think that's a very good idea. I really do feel most odd. Just uh, some coffee and a little dry toast and... Oh, please, telephone Mr. Fane and ask him if we could meet at one o'clock rather than noon. Very good, madam. That's enough. We don't want to kill her, do we? May I take the train? Forgive me, madam, but I really don't think you should be up. I must make an effort. Mr. Fane is expecting me. Did you give him my message? I hope you won't be offended, madam, and I took the liberty of cancelling your appointment with Mr. Fane. I really didn't think you'd be well enough to go, and I informed Mr. Fane accordingly. I think you're right. But it was very thoughtful of you, Master. It's probably gastric flu. It's very prevalent at the moment. If I might venture, the only way to deal with it is to retire to bed and to remain there for a day. I've always found it works wonders. I believe you're right again, Master. I'm always recommending it to other people, always reluctant to do it myself. Well, if you'll no, permit no, me. No, no, really, really, I'm perfectly all right. He 
here we are, madam. I'm being spoiled outrageously. I hope you'll feel better soon, madam. That will be all, Lisa. That is the sixth time in a row. I know you're cheating, but I can't spot how. Just about on schedule. Well, go on. Take it easy. It'd never do to show her I was expecting it, would it? I should be in bed and fast asleep, shouldn't I? <laughs> Mint. Mm. Mr. Roger Masters reporting for duty. Sorry, madam, I sleep like the dead. Have you been ringing long? I'm sorry. I, I didn't wish to disturb you, Masters, but I really believe I'm quite ill. I think I'd better have a doctor. Well, certainly, madam. I know an excellent man. Oh, no, no, no. Mr. Fain left an embassy list. It's in my address book on the dressing table. There's a doctor's number in there. Yeah, of course, madam. Oh. I'm sorry to ring you at this late hour. I'm speaking with Mrs. Laura Valens, a friend of Mr. Hugo Fane. Could I speak to Dr. Eastall, please? I see. Yes, I see. When will he... Uh, not till then. Oh, thank you. My apologies again for disturbing you. I'm sorry, madam. Apparently, Dr. Eastall is away at a medical convention in Bermuda. He'll not be back for two weeks. Oh, no. However, as I say, I do know an excellent man, used by a number of my previous employers. He's a most conscientious doctor. I'm sure you'll be in good hands. May I fetch him? Oh, yes, yes, please do. Certainly, madam. His number's downstairs. I'll telephone him immediately. Yes, it's a virus infection, Mrs. Valance. I know that sounds alarming, but it's not. It's, it's very minor. Uh. The symptoms are distressing, I know. <laughs> but his bark is worse than his bite, if you understand me. I'm sorry to be in so much trouble. Not at all, not at all. I wish all my patients were sensible. Hit small things early, and they don't benefit the big things. That's what I always say. Well, how long will I be? What, in bed? Mm. Depends on you largely. If you're a sensible girl, do as you're told. Take your medicine. Four or five days. Five days? Well, it could be much longer if you don't behave yourself. Now then. <laughs> I've written out some prescriptions there, but I'm leaving with your chap, and I'm relying on him to see that you play the game. So, when I'm not here, he is, as it were, in loco parentis for me, you understand? And I'm telling him you need lots of rest and lots of quiet, and he's to see that you get him. All right? Yes, Doctor. Now, good. Now, take these. They'll help you to sleep. Now, here we are. Uh. All right? <coughs> All right? <laughs> good. Good. Fine. Well, that's it, then. There we are. Now, then. Yes. Oh, yes. And remember... Your butler is the boss. I will remember. Right. Ah, same as last time, I suppose. 
Impossible to detect and gradual in the way that it hits them. It's the only stuff. As for tonight, there'll be more later as usual. Well, there was a time, you know. Yeah. That's before you got struck off. Come off it, Ledworth. You haven't lived so well for years. And try and stay at least one quarter sober, would you? I may want you again. Now, don't you push me around. You need me. I own you. Don't forget that, Ledworth. I picked you up out of your own filth, dusted you off, and made you useful again. Money, the clothes you stand in, the liquor you pour down your gullet, they're there by the grace of me. I even put a roof over your head. Or oh, perhaps you'd like to go back where I found you, eh, Ledworth? The alcoholic ward? Oh, I, 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 I didn't mean anything. I'll do what you say. Of course you will. Of course you will. I get back to the house. What's the matter with him? I think it's the time of night when bent doctors remember the Hippocratic Oath. Good morning, madam. I trust you slept well. Oh, yes, thank you. I'm, I'm very thirsty. Breakfast will be up in five minutes, madam. What are you doing? Dr. Ledworth prescribed complete rest and quiet, madam. No telephone call. No, I don't think that's necessary. He warned me you might be a difficult patient, madam. I'm afraid I shall have to be quite heartless. Give me no telephone calls. The doctor was quite explicit, sir. He said no telephone calls and no visits. He said it was most important that Mrs. Valence had complete rest. What's the matter with it, did he say? He said it was a virus. Not serious, but it could become so if Mrs. Valence did not observe his routine. Oh, Dr. Eastall, Hugo Fane. Uh, doctor, this is going to sound rather odd, but uh, has a Mrs. Laura Valens consulted you? And if so, and just completely in confidence, of course, what the devil's wrong with her? She hasn't consulted you. No, 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 nothing at all. Uh, thank you, Doctor. But I'm hungry, Masters. You hardly gave me any breakfast either. I'm sorry, madam. Doctor's orders. You know what they say, feed a cold and starve a fever. Is that what I've got, a fever? I'm afraid I know nothing about the art of medicine, madam. But I do have a great respect for medical men. Dr. Ledworth says it's for your own good. Oh, did Mr. Fane telephone this morning? Uh, no, madam. I see, thank you. I don't see there's anything odd about it at all, Dad. Well, I recommended our own doctor to her. Now she's gone and gotten herself ill. She's called in somebody else. Woman's privilege. She decided not to take your advice. Maybe that's what you're sore about, is it? I mean, after all, she can choose her own doctor without starting a congressional debate. Mm, yeah, I suppose you're right. Uh, can I borrow your car tonight? Hmm? Yes. yes. Hey, what's wrong with your own? That's why I'm feeling so weak. I'm sorry, madam, but I'm only following the doctor's instructions. I'm sure it's doing you good. I'm sorry, sir. I'd be wrong to disobey the doctor's and madam's instructions. The treatment requires complete rest and no visitors. Who's looking after? 
He's an American doctor, sir. He's a friend of Madam's who happened to be over here. Well, where can I get in touch with him? I'm afraid I don't know, sir. Mrs. Valens called him herself. He seems very strict. Thank you. There we are, Madam. That's better. Yeah. Oh, has Mr. Fane called? No, I'm afraid not, Madam. Oh. Will that be all, Madam? Yes. Hugo. It all seems very unnecessarily complicated to me. Hugo. Certainly, sir. Goodbye, sir. I'm sorry, madam. I wasn't able to get away at once. Was that Mr. Fane? Yes, it was, madam. I asked him if he'd like to come up, but he said he'd spoken to Dr. Ledworth, and the doctor had advised against it. He came to say goodbye, madam. Goodbye? Mr. Fane has been posted back to Washington, madam. His plane leaves at noon. He called here on his way to the airport. Oh, no. Oh, Hugo. It's not like Laura. To be so uncommunicative, I mean. Well, she, she is ill. Well, that's true. But what does it take to pick up a telephone? That's what worries me. You know, I'm beginning to think she's not just ill, she's very ill. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much if I were you. You say her butler's a pretty confident man. He seems to have a grip on things. <laughs> yes, he does indeed. You see my notes anyway? Notes? Mm. Yes, for this broadcast of mine tomorrow. Pretty sensitive subject, isn't it? Arab nationalism. Well, somebody's got to speak out. I thought this was supposed to be live and unscripted. It is. It is. 20 years in the embassy have taught me that a few notes never want to miss. Madam, what are you doing out of bed? You shouldn't. You really shouldn't. So I have discovered. Here, let me help you back. Yes, thank you. There now. There oh. we are. I don't know what Dr. Ledworth would say, I'm sure. Huh? Supposing you got out on the landing and fallen uh, down the stairs. I wouldn't have done that. I dare say not, madam, but where would I have been if you had? <laughs> I was worried about disturbing you, but now I'm glad I did. Hmm? Uh, simply some household checks for you to sign, madam. I'm sorry to trouble you, but they have to be attended to. Yes. If you'd be so kind. Yes. Thank you, madam. I don't mind telling you, you alarmed me just now, madam. I can see you're not to be trusted. I can see. I shall have to take precautions, or Dr. Ledworth will have my hide. There now, that's better, isn't it? Keep the light out of your eyes. I don't want that. Try and get some sleep now. What time is it? What, what day is this? Oh? She's a tough girl. She's had enough of the stuff to knock her sideways, but she keeps fighting back. More? Not yet. It won't be long now. She's beginning to lose touch. discussion on Arab nationalism. As former first secretary for many years in both Beirut and Cairo, Mr. Fane is uniquely qualified to discuss Arab aspirations. Mr. Fane? 
Yes, well, I've come along here this afternoon to... Hugo. You haven't gone away. This really won't do at all. You're not helping yourself, you know. This is exactly what you shouldn't be doing. You said Mr. Fane had gone away. And so he has, madam. No, I heard him on the radio. It was probably recorded, madam, before he went away. No, it was live. They said it was live. And madam probably imagined it was live, knowing the voice. You're in a very weak state, you know. It's easy for one's mind to play tricks. There's nothing wrong with my mind. I want another doctor, a second opinion. I'll speak to Dr. Ledworth, madam. You'll be very hurt, I'm sure, but nevertheless, if it's what you wish, I will do so. Yes. Now I suggest you settle down and conserve your energy. You've only to ring if you need me. No food at all today. But the milk's got the stuff in it. Starvation's what she needs now. Hunger's a great little spirit breaker. What did she actually say? That's what she said. That's all she said. Tell Mr. Fane. Then she hung up. Does she, she sound all right? No. Sound a bit odd. Very odd, in fact. And she said nothing more? Not a thing. Look, I thought I'd better just hang on and tell you in person, but now I've really got to go. You won't forget I'm staying in Oxford overnight, will you? No, sorry, I'll remember. Fine. Bye. Mrs. Valence's residence. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, she did phone you, completely against doctor's orders. And then she had a little fainting fit. Just what the doctor said might happen if she overexerted herself. Oh, she just wanted to tell you she was all right, sir, and to apologize for not being in touch. <laughs> well, she's asleep now, sir. I wouldn't wish to disturb her. But I'll certainly tell her you called. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, sir. Get out of my way. I have 
haven't gone away, have I? I'm here to look after you. Now, here, just, just, just sit down a minute. Yes. You need a doctor. Yes. And we both need the police. Calculation. Another few days and it'll be over. We'll be out of here and on our way. Just another few days. I'm going to have to leave you for a while. I, I, I'll be all right. Of course you will. Because you trust me, don't you? Completely trust me. Don't open the door to anyone. sense. Hello, Jeremy. Piers. Look, you don't have my old man with you, do you? Well, it's just that he didn't sleep here last night, and I wondered. <laughs> don't be disgusting. Fine. Thanks. Peter? Piers. Look, I, I don't want to be an alarmist or anything, but Hugo seems to be missing. Yeah, I, I mean, I know it's nothing, but... Well, he was pretty outspoken about Arab affairs yesterday. Getting to be a habit, sir, isn't it? 
Funny the way it happens. I've not had an inquiry on this patch for over a year, and suddenly I'm in and out like the tide. What is it this time? Just a few routine inquiries, sir. Oh, certainly, Sergeant. Please do come in. Going away, are you? My employer's been rather ill. She's gone to Bermuda to recuperate. I am to follow. This is the life, eh, Constable? Butler. Nothing but the best. Best houses. Best food. Of course, you are a servant. But then so am I. Servant to the public on tap, day and night. I'm inquiring about a Mr. Fane. Mr. Hugo Fane. He's not in his usual haunts. We heard he might have called here last night. Mr. Fane, yes, he did call here last night. He's a friend of Mrs. Valance. I told him he just missed her. He was very disappointed. And then Mr. Fane got into his car and drove away. He didn't say where he was going, did he, sir? Mm, no, I'm afraid not, Sergeant. Oh, thank you kindly, sir. Well, thank you. See that, Constable? That's what I call the perfect butler. Smart, too. Look at those buttons, almost regimental. following him, nothing like that, sir. He did seem a little strained, but no, he said nothing like that. All right, sir, thank you very much. Sorry to have bothered you. Not at all. Did your father get any other strange calls after the broadcast, sir? No, Mrs. Valance was the only one. Well, that one seems to be a dead end with her going away and all. Well, maybe that's what she was calling to say. Uh, well, why should she hang up so suddenly? Who knows, with women, sir. I'm simply asking you to be sensible, madam. A little business before lunch. I'm not signing any will. I wouldn't dream of asking you to, madam. It's not a will, it's a simple power of attorney. With you like this, someone has to look after your affairs. Sign this and I will be able to do so. I'd be signing my death warrant. Madam is being fanciful. Perhaps we'd better leave you to think it over. My lunch. I need food. You're starving me. All in good time, madam. I don't think you're well enough to eat anything at the moment. We'll see how you feel a bit later. Please. P please. P please. Raj, I wish you wouldn't go. I've told you, I've got to clear up one or two things down at the manor before we leave. We're leaving the manor as well? Well, this job's got a bit too hot. Let's pick up sticks and clear off when we get that signature. When we get it. <laughs> Another 24 hours without food and she'll sign her life away for a dog biscuit. You really enjoy all this, don't you? No, it's purely business. Now, you play it cool and don't go near her no matter how much she rings. Got it? Yes. I'll be back this evening. Oh, no. I'm afraid so, sir. In a wood in Somerset. In the boot of his car, he'd been stabbed. I've just heard from the county police they think it could be political. Obviously, nothing to do with Mrs. Valance. 
Uh, yeah, I, I suppose you're right. I just can't help thinking. No, no, I guess not. Uh, yeah, yes, I will. Yeah, thanks, Sergeant. I walked straight in here. The front door was open and I walked straight in here. All you have to do is stay here, sit tight, and make sure no one comes snooping, and I walk straight in here! I must have forgotten, Mr. Martin. You are drunk! All those advantages. A good family, the right education, a medical degree, and you just fritter them away. Do you know I was educated, Ledworth? Here and there, and not very often. My father was an under-porter. He blacked people's boots. He lived for 66 years, and all that time, all he ever did was black other people's boots. While my mother helped out in the kitchens. That's my heritage, Ledworth. Not like yours. Good start. Solid background in the upper bracket. And yet, look at you now. And look at me. Fetch me a drink, Ledworth. A drink? Scotch! Mm. With ice. In a crystal glass, on a silver tray. Well, go on, Ledworth, obey your orders. Here, Ledworth. No, 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 you're doing it all wrong, Ledworth. You're catching my eye. Never look directly into the master's eye. Deferential, Ledworth, deferential. Otherwise, the master might think you were getting above your station. Might think you were regarding yourself as an equal. No, stay where you are. I swear I'll drop you one day! Shot me? <laughs> you wouldn't do that. Bring me down and you go down too. Besides, you know I'd kill you, don't you? Anyway, you won't have to put up with me for much longer. What? The Valance woman. Close to the kill now. Then I think Lisa and me will take a little holiday on the Riviera. Relax a bit, catch our breath. And then, when we're both nicely rested... Well, there's rich pickings on the Riviera, Ledworth. People crying out for an exemplary butler. Oh, what about me? What about you? Well, you can't do it alone. You need me. A doctor. I expect there's a French equivalent to you, Ledworth. The gutters of the world are filled with Ledworths. Oh, no, no, no. You, you couldn't. You couldn't leave me behind here. No, you're right. I couldn't. Slip out from under my thumb and you'd go to pieces. Start talking. I just have to think of a happy solution, won't I? To stop you talking. <laughs> That's my little joke, Ledworth. Just to show you how easy it could be. You behave yourself and I'll look after you. And behaving yourself means keep the front door locked. Your nose clean and pacing your drinking. 
I wouldn't leave you behind, Ledworth. I like looking at you. You're the mirror of my success. very nice to me the times I saw him. Oh, dear. Please, sit down. What did you want to see my father about? Well, it's not your problem, really. If you thought my father could help, maybe I can, too. Well, it was about Mrs. Valence, really. What about Mrs. Valence? No, perhaps another time. No, I do... please. What about Mrs. Valence? Well, well, it was about me being sacked for stealing the ring. Well, I didn't do it. And there was only me and him there, the butler, I mean. So I knew he must have arranged it, you know, tried to get rid of me to get me the sack. Why should he want to do that? Well, that's what I asked myself. So I went down to the village where his last job was, at Chevening Manor. I saw it on his references. Yeah, so you went there? Well, I didn't get any joy at the house. Just an old doctor living there. Doctor? That's what the locals told me. At least he used to be a doctor. Struck off, a drunk. But that isn't all they told me. You see, it seems there was a maid living there, too, when Masters arrived. And one day, some silver went missing, and they found it in her room, so she was sacked. What was the name of his employer there? Oh, that's no good. She went abroad. What? She was ill for a long time, didn't see anyone. Then she went abroad to recuperate. Well, the village people say she must have left him in charge of the manor. They see him down there sometimes. Right. Call Sergeant Rayner. Tell him to get around to Mrs. Valence's right away. Which police station? Rog? I'm Detective Constable Kane, Rochester Row. Sergeant Rayner about. Here. I'm here. Sergeant Rayner isn't here. If you'd like to come back later when Mr. Masters, the butler's here, I'm sure he... That's funny. The Sarge said he'd meet me. He said he was coming to collect his notebook. Thinks he left it in your kitchen this morning. Is Mrs. Valence about? No, she's gone away. We told your sergeant this morning. Of course, you're right. He told me. Well, if the sergeant isn't going to show up, perhaps I'd better collect his notebook for him. Which way's kitchen? It's all right. I'll go and look for it. You stay here. Thank you very much, miss. Starving his signature. It, it's over. You're getting out of here. Can you stand? I don't know. No. in the news. Shh, there's a policeman in the house. What? Where is he? Well, I don't know. I left him there. He said he was looking for Sergeant Rayner. 
Sasha, that's him. That's the man. Here's Fane. How nice. The house is about to burn down and your charred remains are going to be mistaken for mine. The gallant butler burned to a crisp trying to save his mistress. Pity, really. You and your father, you did have style. Over it will, sir. Fire is your great leveller. Makes no distinction between master and bondman. Rog, we can't! Sex the other cans and shut up! I'd like to find a new name. Goodbye! It's been fun! Oh, good evening, sir. Going out, were you? I don't know, I despair of the public sometimes. We keep telling them before you go out, make sure you left no lighted candles burning down into pools of paraffin. Take care of it, Constable. In the bedroom, are they, sir? They found this button in Mr. Fane's hand, sir. I remember admiring it when we had our little chat. Funny you're not noticing a thing like that, sir. You being the perfect butler and all. 